Hey guys, and welcome back. So in the previous nugget, we had just discussed some of the broader concepts around network automation. Now we learned there were certain ways we could automate networks. One of the ways we could use was the Python programming language. But we also learned that by far the most popular way to automate your network right now is to use the tool Ansible. So what exactly is Ansible? What does it do for us? And why do we want to learn how to use it? Well, Ansible was developed by the very team at Red Hat. Now, here is the thing. Ansible is very popular for network automation, but it's also widely used in things like systems administration. So don't think that this is just a tool for the networking devices. Now, in the world of network automation, we have these two distinct concepts. We have something called a push model, and we also have something called a pull model. And this is actually one of the reasons why Ansible gained so much traction early on. You see, in the systems administration world, many of the devices that were being managed were things like Linux servers. And because these Linux servers are allowing you to install many different things on them, basically, you could install something called an agent on these devices. Now, all an agent would be would be something that you could install on a target device. So let's imagine that these were not actually Cisco switches. They were in fact just, well, let's just say Linux servers. So what you would do here on the actual server, you would install a piece of software. Same again here, same again here, same again here. And here is the thing, see where you were managing the network from, this control node. Because the actual target devices out here had this special agent configured on them, it meant that they could actually proactively talk back to the automation system. Now, when the target devices can effectively talk back to the system and they can request changes come down, this is referred to as a pull model. That is because the devices themselves, the ones that are being managed, they are effectively pulling down the updates and changes and they're checking in with the automation system. Now, here is the thing. We know as network engineers that many of the devices that we are managing are old, dusty, legacy devices like these ones here, these Cisco iOS devices. You can go onto Cisco iOS and you can quite easily configure things like BGP, but you can't go onto a Cisco switch and actually start downloading things like Python, for example. So this really was the crux of the issue for network engineers. All these systems administrators had the ability to install these agents that meant that they had no problem basically getting their automation systems up and running. All the devices were capable of these agents, so many of these tools catered to that model, therefore they could be automated with these tools. This was not an option for us. So maybe you know where I'm going with this. Ansible actually happens to use a push model. Now the beauty of the push model here is that we don't have to install anything on any of these devices right here. Nope, not at all. How cool is that? That means that all of these old devices, these old catalyst switches from you know, 20 years ago, it did not matter. Effectively, all we would have to do would be to install Ansible here on our control node that was managing these devices. And from here, irrespective if the device was capable of installing a piece of software, you could just push out the changes from the control node just like this. So immediately, there was a great use for Ansible within the network automation space. Because here is the thing, with Ansible, so long as you have the ability to SSH into a device, well, if you can SSH into that device, well, you can automate that device with Ansible. Now, another distinct feature about Ansible is the way it actually handles the configurations of these devices. We have two different styles of configurations. We have declarative configurations and procedural configurations. Ansible typically follows a procedural model. What this means is that in order to get a device to a particular end state, you're going to have to specify to that device the exact commands to get to that end state. That might sound a little bit strange. What I mean is, if we want to happen to have some OSPF configured, well, we actually have to tell the target device, maybe this router here, the step-by-step -step commands to get there. We'd have to say router, you know, OSPF1 or something like that and then start specifying our network statements. And the important thing here is that the order of operations actually matter. That means that you can't just log into a Cisco device over SSH and then immediately begin configuring the OSPF router ID. Instead, you would have to go through certain procedures. You would have to elevate to 
global configuration mode. So order of operations matter. First, you would have to do conf t and then say router OSPF with a process ID, let's say one. And then after these commands, you could specify that network statement that you want to put in. This is the manner in which Ansible works. Now you as a network engineer who happens to go through their configurations using the CLI, this just might seem pretty obvious. Well, how else would you actually configure a device? Well, some devices effectively don't need to do that step. You basically just specify the end state. This is how tools like, you maybe heard of it, Terraform work. In Terraform land, we just say, I want this end state i.e. you just specify your end state, what is it you want the actual network to look like, and the automation system under the hood will figure that out for you. Now what I will say is that Ansible typically works in this procedural manner. It certainly acts this way when you're dealing with the old legacy devices. However, with the modern age of network automation, we have new protocols such as RESTConf and NetConf. And even with Ansible using these protocols, we can actually configure our network declaratively. So understand that whilst Ansible does typically use a procedural model, there is flexibility here depending on the type of configuration we are doing. Basically, Ansible supports both models. So Ansible is flexible. It allows us to automate old devices as well as new modern devices. Is that the only reason for its staggering popularity? Well, the answer is no. The reality is Ansible, generally speaking, is pretty simple to use. And the reason is this. Typically, if you wanted to maybe say automate these devices, maybe device R1, 2, 3, and 4, from this control node using Python, reaching out to all four devices, well, you would actually have to write some Python code. Now, if you are familiar with Python, then this is not such a big task at all. But the reality is people coming from the network engineer world, well, they don't have a developer background. So this is not really their wheelhouse. Network engineering itself is a hard enough skill to learn. Not everyone has the spare time to go and become a full time Python developer, you know? So this is where Ansible helps us out. It's going to actually abstract away many of the details of the coding. Because do you remember when I said earlier that there is some interaction or rather some relation between Ansible and Python? Well, that is because Ansible actually uses Python under the hood. In fact, if you so choose, if you become advanced enough and comfortable enough with Ansible, you can write your own Python modules to work with an Ansible. But that's a little bit more advanced. For the general engineer, instead of actually having to write some type of Pythonic code, you just happen to write the instructions that you want to do in the very human readable YAML. So our way into automation is not by having to deal with Python code, it's having to deal with writing some YAML. And like I say, YAML is very human readable. If I happen to show you an Ansible playbook, and we'll get to what those are very, very shortly, but just think of them as instructions of what you want Ansible to do on your network. If I showed you one of these, even without any programming knowledge, there's a fair chance you could probably interpret what this playbook is trying to do. Not always, there are some corner cases, there are some complexities here and there, but generally speaking, the barrier of entry of using Ansible is much lower than trying to automate the network with Python or with something like say the Go programming language. So like I say, there is some very cool use cases for Ansible. So like I say, Ansible is super popular because it allows us to reach our old devices and it allows us to interact with those devices programmatically in a fairly simple way. Here is the other cool thing about Ansible. See if you just happen to write a generic Python script with something called a for loop and we're not going to dive into the concepts of programming right just now. But if we happen to just write a simple Python script to configure these four devices with that for loop, this is the way the connection would look. We would go to this device here and configure that. And then after we were done, we would go to the next device here and configure that. And when that was done, we'd go to this one. And then when that was done, we'd finally go to the last one. The cool thing about Ansible is it allows us some form of concurrency. So what this actually means is that when we try to automate these four devices, what we can actually do is effectively reach out to all four at the very same time. We don't need to wait on device one finishing and then device two, then device three, then device four. 
Let's just do it all at once and then come back. Now again, this is something you can solve within Python. You can natively write concurrency into your programs, but again, that is just raising the barrier of entry. Whereas Ansible, Ansible does all this for us automatically under the hood. We don't need to understand how it works. We just know that it does work that way. So, so far, it seems like we're getting a pretty good deal with Ansible. We can automate old devices. We can interact with relative ease with our networking devices. We have this built-in concurrency, but that is not all. One of, if not the most important concepts within Ansible is that we get something called an inventory. Now, this part here is one of the crown jewels of Ansible. It's what makes it so very useful when managing multiple devices. Now, how exactly does the inventory work? Well, how about we talk about the actual architecture of Ansible so that we can actually understand that and well, that's what we're going to be talking about in the very next nuggets. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in a career in IT or just looking to brush up your IT skills, then be sure to visit cbtnuggets.com for a free trial.